If these same men spent the same amount of energy going to the gym and improving their own lives as much as they do raging about girls, they wouldn't have anything to complain about. Let's talk about the red pill movement. This is something I think is really important to talk about as more men are going into this space, but I think at its roots, it's very destructive and I wanna dive in shortly about what it really is. But before we do, I wanna remind you guys to hit that notification bell to know when I post next, to subscribe, like, uh, it really helps with the algorithms. Let's start with what the red pill is. The red pill community is a term often used to describe an online subculture that emerged from discussions primarily centered around gender dynamics, relationships and societal issues. And it takes its name from the famous scene in the movie in The Matrix, where Neo is offered the choice between a red pill and a blue pill, the red being the one that would reveal the truth about the world. The blue one would allow him to continue living in blissful ignorance. So it's kind of a play on that. Originally, the red pill meant knowing and seeking truth in the age of internet disinformation, but it has since evolved into being synonymous with the manosphere. The red pill community claims to provide insights into human nature, often focusing on aspects like dating, attraction, self-improvement, and personal empowerment. But what is it really? I would argue it's the male version of feminism that revolves around blaming women for all of the ails of society. But I always say, if you wanna know about a movement, take a look at their leaders. So let's do that. Let's take a look. I don't read books. I'm too smart to read. I need action. I need constant chaos in my life to feel content. I need to be driving a supercar and fighting a bunch of hoes and champagne and going crazy. Physically you, abusive. You gotta endure. People are too- You wanna stick in people relationship? People are just- See, I mean, look, people I'm nowadays gonna be honest. are just- You call yourself the godfather of the red pill. You call myself like the, the godfather of the manosphere, okay? okay? Other people have called me that. Okay, yeah. Not the greatest look. As time goes on, the thought leaders of the red pill community seem to be more concerned with denigrating women than they are with teaching men how to be the best men they can be and how to have healthy, successful relationships. And this is really the problem that I see with it. And to me, it all goes back to accountability. It's a lot easier to say, look at how much women suck and look at how they're ruining dating and much harder to ask how they can be the best men. If these same men spent the same amount of energy going to the gym and improving their own lives as much as they do raging about girls, they wouldn't have anything to complain about. And this is why I think it's good that people are starting to realize that the red pill movement is attracting the same type of people it was meant to oppose, radical feminists. The red pill movement has really become a different side to the same coin as feminism. The same broad stroke statements that feminists make about men, they are making about women, absent of nuance. Let's first take a look at Robert Downey Jr., the supposed male feminist. I was curious if you took away any like commentary on like, Patriarchy and war. <laughs> um, men start wars and the entire planet should be a matriarchy. <laughs> but that, I've never changed position on that. The feminists have convinced Robert Downey Jr. and many other men that their gender is violent and oppressive and synonymous with all things evil. As a result, he wants women to run the world. The red pill, on the other hand, has convinced Pearl and many other women that their gender is stupid and conniving and evil and synonymous with incompetence. As a result, she wants men to dominate the world. <laughs> Do you guys see the similarities here and how they're both not sustainable? The radical feminist and the red pill manosphere represent opposite ends of the same spectrum, akin to the pendulum swinging. Both are marked by destructiveness, bitterness, and rigid absolutism, fostering increased animosity, suspicion, and division between genders. And what's been the outcome? It's a decline in marriages, happiness, healthy relationships, and birth rates. A lot of conservatives overlook the destructive nature of the red pill manosphere, in my opinion, because radical feminists are far more socially accepted, even though they rightfully object to this acceptance. But while radical feminists may overtly display their extremism, the manosphere conceals it more effectively, presenting a facade of collectiveness rooted in hyper-rationalization. Despite their surface composure, both sides harbor resentment, bitterness, and anger, with the manosphere labeling its absolutism as the harsh truth and disarming dissent as proof of their point. So when you guys see the red pill content out there masquerading as the harsh truth, really dig deep into what they are actually saying. Are they giving men a good example of what healthy gender dynamics should look like? Or are they trying to avoid accountability for the bad actions of men? This isn't to say that all men are bad, all men are good. This isn't about absolutism. This is about breaking down nuance and saying that both sides are just as bad as the other. What do you guys think about the red pill community? And if you guys wanna see me do a deeper dive talking about how it came to be, where it is now, how people came to seeing these truths about the red pill community, let me know down in the comments below because this is really interesting to me. Or make sure you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe, make sure to comment, do all that good stuff. It really helps with the algorithm and I will see you guys in the next video.